part of my role at Kiwi Rail is to oversee performance reporting, and uh, this includes the delivery of our annual integrated report through my teams. Now, it is integrated report at the moment is quite a trendy subject, and as Felicity sort of point out, pointed out, it is being stakeholder um, driven at the moment, and a lot of um, major organisations have um, are starting to adopt. So Meridian, uh, ZNG, um, New Zealand Post, and Sanford, to name a few. It's also, um, as Felicity sort of outlined, the Treasury are now um, with the Living Standards Framework are looking. To, that's an integrated um, reporting model as well. So. So for the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to give you an overview of integrated reporting and what it is. Um, I'm going to try to leave the jargon out of it and try to just keep it in really simple terms. I'm also going to give you a little bit of insight into our experience as a first-time adopter uh, with integrated reporting and share some of the learnings that we've picked up along the way from having completed two reports now. The first thing is, at KiwiRail, our annual integrated report is effectively just our annual report. In its most simple terms, it's called an integrated report because we don't report up and down along business unit lines anymore. We report across the business on the drivers that materially uh, affect our ability to create value. Within the um, integrated reporting framework, this value is known as capitals. For KiwiRail, our capitals, and oh, you can see them on the board as well. For KiwiRail, our capitals, um, which give us the ability to create value are our people, our assets, uh, the environment. So from an environmental viewpoint, how do we create value? Well, moving one tonne of freight on rail is about 66% more um, environmentally friendly than moving it up by a truck. So when you add this up across the network, we save New Zealand about 200,000 tonnes of carbon emissions a year. And we also take 1.1 million trucks off the road. So that's that's the, con the concept of some of the value that we're adding. We also, um, we also have a capital for our skills and know-how, so how we run our business, our IP, um, our relationships, so our interactions with customers and stakeholders, and our financial um, capital as, as well, which is, once again, it's not just the financial capital that we use to, to generate or to, to run our business operating model and run our CapEx program, it's also the the wider value that uh, the, the value of rail brings to New Zealand. Um, a lot of the, a lot of, I think EY last year estimated that rail, for instance, brings 1.5 billion of um, value to the New Zealand economy, and these are these are these are not figures that you'd see in a financial statements. Probably another um, real core, core principle with um, integrated reporting is um, is integrated thinking. Um, and once again, that, that's just really the active consideration between business units or functional units to, um, to acknowledge and understand the relationship with other business units. So a really simple example for Kiwi Rail would be we run trains from Auckland to Christchurch. Um, so we have a freight plan. When the trains turn up in Wellington, they need a ship to take them across the strait. So if, if there's no ship waiting for the train, then we're disconnected and we're not operating in an integrated way. So on the screen now we have what, what is the inter integrated reporting framework. And it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty familiar, it should be a pretty familiar model for most people in this room. It's, you have your business model in the middle, you have your inputs, outputs and outcomes. And it's for this reason, and, and it's my personal view that integrated reporting is actually well uh, suited to the public sector, um, because public sector organisations are already being driven by outcomes. So provided you're delivering these outcomes, outcomes across your business, as opposed to up and down singular business unit lines, you, then it's likely that you're already operating with an integrated approach. So if you are thinking of um, adopting an integrated report, you might actually be a lot closer than you think you are. So why has, um, so why has um, integrated reporting been so good for KiwiRail? You know, it's one of those things that it's just a report. What, what, is, what is the benefit that it can actually have? But when you first start reporting on an outcomes basis on the factors that materially affect your ability to create value over time, these factors become your business drivers. Now, for me personally, the, the lights-on moment came 
is when we adopted an integrated report, we did an assessment of the integrated thinking and the integrated operating that was actually occurring in our business. And what, what we were able to see really clearly is, is ways, simple strategies and initiatives we could take to supercharge and embed those practices into our business. So one, one, really, um, one, one good example we have is we set up a capital committee. And the capital committee invites all the executive, um, including, including the head of our sales team, who doesn't actually have a capital budget at all. It invites the asset managers and the, the key project managers that we have. Also the commercial managers are there. So you have 20 to 25 people attending on a monthly basis. So there's more talking, there's more understanding between business units. There's a greater, in, there's a greater relationships um, and understanding of the interdependencies that actually are uh, occurring in the business. Four months into this capital committee being set up, uh, we were tested. Um, we had the Kaikoura earthquake in November of uh, 2016. Um, the immediate impact of the uh, main North Line shutting in Kaikoura was we lost a third of our domestic revenue overnight. Two months after this, the capital committee came together. Um, two hours later, we left the room able to, and we were able to bridge the gap between that revenue loss without sacrificing the organisational priorities that we had. So each business unit sort of understood where the priority was for our business right now and uh, made sacrifices as, as a result. So we were geared up to deal with it. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the process that we went through as first time adopters now. So the first thing that we did is um, Felicity talked about um, a lot of a lot of a lot of organisations are shifting because of stakeholder expectation. Um, we shifted two years ago, so we we didn't have that stakeholder expectation upon us. Um, it really just started with one person having a, having an idea that we should do this. Um, so he was a subject matter expert and he was a strategy manager and sustainability manager. And he probably um, he probably had a little bit of a vested interest because. Um, Kiwi Rail had previously produced a sustainability report. It was um, a really good piece of work, but it just no one actually read it. So, um, so he, um, so what he did is he approached um, a group of third tier and fourth tier managers, and between us we formed a group of about five people, and we researched integrated reporting, um, and we started to think, hey, this might be a good idea. So the next step, step three, was really the make or break for us. Uh, it was. You know, it was the biggest hurdle we had to go through, because ultimately to do an integrated report, you've had, you have to demonstrate the ability that there's been some integrated thinking, and that, there's been, that you're acting and running your business in an integrated manner. So, um, otherwise you'd just be writing a report based on fiction. So, um, so, that, so for us it was, um, so we, we looked at our annual report, we looked at our sustainability report, uh, we looked at our monthly board reporting, and, and what we found is that we were actually already operating in an integrated manner and reporting on, in an integrated manner through those board reports. The next thing we did is we um, we went along, and presented our findings to the exec, um, but because we had um, because we had a core group of five people, and we'd actually we'd put a bit of work and we'd, we'd, we we were prepared for that conversation. It went pretty well. It was pretty easily done. And then we formed the project. We got the green light and formed the project team. So for Kiwi Rail, this was the formation of the team and the structure of the team was one thing we absolutely nailed. We had a core team, so we had a project manager who was the um, the financial performance and planning manager, and her, her role is she's responsible for all the board reporting. So she's got coverage across everything. She understands the story that we're trying to tell as an organisation. We also had um, a, a subject matter expert in there. We had a writer and we had a comms person as part of the core four team. Around that team, we put a lot of key supporters. So we had the general manager of finance, the general manager of strategy, um, the finance teams, the commercial managers, um, the comms team as well. So there were a lot of enablers. There were a lot of people that were prepared to step in, help with the writing, help with um, reviewing, fact checking. And then we went out to the business and we, we talked to our, our engineers and we, we worked with them to develop case studies. But the reason, the reason it worked is because we had a clear line of sight to the exec. We, so we had two executive members who were sponsors, were happy to be sponsors for the project. Um, 
you know, most nights I sit at home with, with my wife on the couch and we've both got our laptops out and she laments that she has to go through five channels of, to get a paper signed off to go to the exec. We'd won. So we were set up, we were geared up to move quickly. We were geared up to, to get quick sign-offs and um, yeah, it just worked. We weren't, we, we, weren't having to, we weren't overcome by compliance. I think another observation we have with at KiwiRail is our finance and our strategy team fall under the same exec member. So it actually, um, there was a lot of empowerment there that we could actually, as, as and when we came up with initiatives and ideas, we could actually embed them and we could go out and put them into the business. We had the weight behind us to do it. So the integrated reporting framework does not require an integrated report takes a capitals approach. Um, so when we adopted, there were two organisations in New Zealand who, who were, had, had already adopted before us, and they were um, uh, New Zealand Post, who took a capitals approach, and um, Sanford, who took a strategy approach. And this really, um, this really goes back to the integrated reporting framework being a principles-based um, you know, it's trying to strike a balance between fl flexibility and prescription. So we had to make a choice, um, and we went back and forth on this quite a bit, but ultimately we went with the capitals approach because as a first time adopter, we thought there's more information available, there's more prescription there at the templates, and there's greater comparison with um, what other organisations are doing. I think, um, you know, two years on, there, there are some cons with going, taking the capitals approach. You know, it, did, it has um, created another way that we talk about our business. So we have a back to basics strategy at KiwiRail where we focus on operational performance, our customers, um, our people, relationships, and safety. So in, by bringing in a capitals reporting approach, it's just it's another way of describing your business. So it has, at times, um, created some internal confusion. But what I would say as a first time adopter, um, it was, it was definitely much easier, I think. Um, I've included this slide because essentially if you call yourself an integrated report, there are requirements you actually have to do. Um, so this slide, um, so what we did is essentially we listed out all the requirements. Um, we noted the expectation within the framework and then how we, how we have addressed it in our report. And we just set, set up a simple traffic light um, matrix. At first, um, it was actually quite, um, it was quite a motivating um, exercise because obviously everything was red lights at the start, and as you sort of work through the process, you're turning a lot more to green. So, it also and it also helped speed up um, getting it through um, the exec and getting it through the chairman as well, because ultimately the chairman has to sign it out that this is an integrated report. So what have we learned through our, through our two integrated reports that we've done so far? Um, start early, um, share the load, you know, don't, don't leave it to a couple of people. Um, you know, get, it, get amongst the business, that's where all the rich stories come from. Um, keep an open mind, um, the amount of times we put things up and they got knocked down, you know, so we had a lot of fast failures. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, and in fact, an integrated report should be imperfect. You know, it should be balanced. It should show the challenges. It's not, it shouldn't be just a marketing document. And the last one is design changes everything. So it's much easier to sell something when it looks cool. So from, um, from our first report to our second report, um, we received a lot of feedback. Um, what, we, what we've tried to do is we've tried to create, you know, we've developed our value creation. Um, we've also tried to put more balance into the report. So we've tried to put a, a more focus on, on the outlook of what's happening in the future. And we've also tried to highlight what challenges we, we face within each capital as well. Um, and we also put, um, put, we tried to get some more um, governance transparency as well. So, um, which was initially um, met with a little bit of resistance, but after, um, attendance records at board meetings were very favourable, it, it came through pretty easily, so. So my final slide is just one I've chucked in because it's, um, 
I've just included it because we're, we're actually, as an organisation, we're super proud of our integrated report. We adopted early. Um, you know, it picked up an award at the Aust um, Australasian Reporting Awards for public sector communications. Um, and it was also 100% internally, internally generated. And mostly, I think, and, and most importantly for us as an organisation, people like reading it. It's, it's, it's an easy read, and so that has to be a good thing. <laughs>